Eyewitness accounts from those who have experienced the afterlife, people who claim to have gone beyond the veil and returned with an urgent message that you need to hear. Today's guest died for an hour and 45 minutes. While doctors were attempting to resuscitate him, he was transported to heaven where he actually met and talked to Jesus. His miraculous account of heaven and what Jesus told him that you need to hear today on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to better understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. My guest today is Dean Braxton. During a routine medical procedure, Dean experienced complications and his body started to shut down. He eventually went into cardiac arrest and died for an hour and 45 minutes. As doctors frantically worked on his body to bring him back, Dean's spirit was experiencing a much better place, heaven. Today he's here to share the astounding things that he saw and heard and what Jesus told him personally. Please welcome Dean Braxton. Hello, Hello my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Fellow sojourner on the earth. Yes. <laughs> waiting for our true home. Now, let's just begin right off with what happened to you. You clinically died. I have, here's the doctor's report. Yes, yes. And uh, here's what's underlined. Cardiac arrest, prolonged cardiac arrest, profound septic shock, status post cardiac arrest, status post prolonged right, CPR. Right. So they were working on you. Right. You died. Yes, died for an hour and, and 45 for, minutes. And they worked on you for an hour and 45 Five minutes. Yes. What, what happened? Did you know you were dying? Well, what happened was I went into the hospital for a routine kidney operation. And I also had a kidney infection. And the doctor at the time thought he gave me the right antibiotics to kill the infection. So when they went to blast the stones, you know how they break them up and everything like that so you can pass them, they literally pushed the um, infection because it was still there into my bloodstream and I became what you call sepsis. And it, it spread throughout my entire body and every vital organ in my body started shutting down. So that's what happened. That's really, I always tell people, they, they measure it by how long my heart stopped operating, but I really suffocated. Yeah, that's what you told me last night. That, so you, you, you felt yourself suffocating and but you weren't overwhelmed with, uh, with, with um, shock or fear? No, 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 not at all. What was amazing to me is that um, that was the one way that I didn't want to die was suffocation. And um, I, I think you're not alone. You're not alone, right? <laughs> well, you're I almost alone. drowned as a little kid, uh, a, a young boy. So I knew what it was like to suffocate. And the one thing I would always say to the Lord, if I'm going to die, don't let it be suffocation. And here I am suffocating. But what's amazing about that was this, Jonathan. It was this, that when it happened to me, I had no fear. Literally, I was thinking to myself when I came to realize that I was dying, that I should be panicking, fearful, freaking out. And all of a sudden, I didn't have any, but then I heard myself say this, because I'm born again, know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I, I heard myself say this, I am going home. And this peace, this joy, this, this mm. surpass anything you could ever imagine, all of a sudden came in, and I was not fearful because I knew where I was going. Beautiful. Man, that's, that's what we signed up for. This yeah, is <laughs> fantastic. Now, you said something to me that I thought was really profound. You don't die and then the spirit leaves yes. the body the spirit leaves the body and then the body dies. Yes, yes, yes. I came to understand that a lot of us think that it's our body kicking us out. In reality, it's us kicking our body off. According to the Bible, because, you know, I, I relate it back to the scriptures. You know, uh, one thing I always like to tell people is my experience doesn't prove the word of God. The word of God proves my experience. And so a lot of times I bring it back to the scriptures. And in this case, what we're talking about, there's a scripture in James, the second chapter that says, faith without works is dead, just like the body is dead without the spirit, which lets you know that it's your spirit leaving and your body dying, not your body dying and then your spirit I leaves. I learned something new with that. That is awesome. <laughs> now your wife is watching all this. Yeah. Did she realize you're dying? Well, 
well, it was amazing how she found out. Uh, she left the hospital to go home to get some clothes because she figured she was coming back because things were getting complicated here. And they were talking about uh, intubating me, you know, putting a tube down my throat, helping me breathe. They were putting a pick line in to put more fluids in. And she figured, I'll go home, come back, and th it'll be okay. While she was driving home, they called her on the cell phone telling her, Marilyn, your, your husband's heart had just stopped and we're doing CPR on him right now. Oh and she said, what? Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is a simple procedure that's going bad really quick here. And what she did is she got off that phone and she called people that she knew would start praying for me and they started praying for me. She went home, another friend picked her up and by the time she got back to the waiting room, the, the, literally, there was nine people in that waiting room that had dropped what they were doing that day. Some were in a concert, a Christian concert, some were at dinner. They stopped, came to that hospital, and started praying for me right then and there. That is awesome. Just, just the fact, yeah. just the fact that the doctor worked on you for an hour and 45 minutes is miraculous That's in miraculous, itself. Yeah. Dean, we have to take a break. When we come back, Dean experiences heaven, what he saw and what he heard. Don't go away. Your gift of support for the work of Jewish Voice today will make you a key part in providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable, especially infants and toddlers. And that without our help, some of the most precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. The question is, how many can we help? The answer lies in part with you. As our special thank you, when you share a gift of any amount right now, we will send you the powerful new book by Jonathan Burnus, A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife, a new look at heaven and hell with stories of people who have been there. In it, Jonathan Burnus takes you on an unforgettable journey of exploration, examining the ancient Jewish sages, the scriptures, and the first-hand accounts of those who have glimpsed at what lies beyond the veil of death. It's an eye-opening journey that empowers you to reimagine heaven and get a clearer vision of the glorious eternity that awaits all believers. This version of A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife is a special, limited edition, hardcover edition of the book. Plus, you'll also receive Dean Braxton's fascinating eyewitness account of his journey to heaven. In heaven, experiencing the throne of God. Both books are yours when you share a gift of any amount right now. But we have an additional gift for you. As an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our illuminating and inspiring magazine, Jewish Voice Today. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished Jewish people on earth. Please remember, the days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please call, write, or click right now. I'm back with Dean Braxton, and we're discussing how he died for an hour and 45 minutes and was transported to heaven. So, <laughs> Dean, this is, this is so fascinating. An hour and 45 minutes, clinically dead. Yes. And the, the, the picture that we've, I'm sure all of us have heard before is going through this tunnel towards light. Is mm -hmm, that what you mm -hmm. experienced? Well, yes, that's what I experienced. Not so much the tunnel as when I left this body, I always like to bring it back to the scriptures. To me is how you, me and you talked about it, to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Faster than a person can blink, I was there. I always let people know that. You know, it's really half of a blink. 
But when I left this body to go be where the Father and Jesus is, I literally left the hospital. I left our universe. I went through this dark area where there's no light at all. And what you see is you see heaven. And so you go into heaven when you go through this blackness and you enter in. And then it's brighter than you can ever imagine. You even come to realize that you really are children of the light because there was no darkness in that light at all. It's brighter than anything you... It's brighter than, yes, yes. Talk about the landscape of heaven. You're you're now in heaven, vibrant colors, live. Talk about the landscape. You know, one of the most amazing things that got me when I first got there is that it, it, everything's alive. There's nothing dead there. Everything is alive. I've gone through the scriptures and pointed out like in, in the 10th chapter of, of Revelation where it talks about the seven thunders because even the atmosphere is alive. And it doesn't say something sounded like thunder. It says the seven thunders spoke and then John was told, no, he can't talk about it. You know, there's an eagle flying around in the 8th chapter proclaiming things. So you know that the animals there can, can talk. The 16th chapter, which is amazing, the 7th verse says, and the altar spoke. That would be like this table being there in heaven speaking. And then the 19th So you're saying objects are alive as well? Yes, everything. Because God is a God of life. So everything he produces is alive. You know, even his throne, it says in the 19th chapter, says something. So everything is alive when you, when you enter in and you're welcomed by everything. You know you're in the right place because everything there wants you there. Now you said something else to me that I, I, I didn't understand. You said the smell on earth is a smell of decay. Yes, yes. But heaven does, it has no decay. Yes, it has no decay. When I'm trying to explain this to people, this is telling you why I use the, the scriptures a lot, is because I'm trying to explain something with five senses on this planet here. I'm trying to tell you what I saw, and I use the word like a whole lot. I try to tell you what I heard. I tell, tell you what I experienced. But the bottom line, I can't tell you what I taste and I can't tell you what I smelled because we have gotten used to decay or death so much here that we filter it out. Every place has a smell. And if you live in that place long enough, you're used to it. Someone coming to that place smells it. But you're used to that smell. Well, we don't realize it. We've been on this planet so long that we're used to the decay or death. And in heaven, nothing is dying. Not only did you see heaven, but I want to jump to to this. You came face to face with Jesus. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I want to focus on that because I've talked to people that have been to heaven but not everyone that has visited heaven has had an experience with Jesus, Mm face-to-face with Jesus. mm -hmm. You had a conversation. Yes, well, what I said to Jesus when I first saw him, as I looked at him, I said, you did this for me. Coming to the realization, the only reason I was there, Jonathan, is because of what he had done. Not even my works got me in. And someone says, what do you mean? I came to understand, even me right now, talking to you. It's him using me. It's him going through me. He gets the credit. I don't get the credit. And the Bible tells us to do everything as we do unto the Lord. So I came to understand that not even my works got me in. Jesus got me in all the way. And all I could do was say, you did this for me? You were a believer already, but this was a new dimension of understanding. Oh, this was a whole new dimension. And then the (laughs) next things I said were this. I said, thank you, 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 thank you. You know, and everything about me was praising him. I always tell people the first thing I was praising him for was this. He looked at me like I never sinned in my entire existence. Like I never did anything wrong. When he says that he forgives you, he forgets it. Dean, you knew all this already, though. You were born again, spirit-filled believer. You knew this already. you, you, You know a lot of these things. Okay, but the reality of it is, do you really believe it? You know, and all of a sudden, it was more past me believing it. It was I was experiencing it. You know, to experience Jesus look at you like you never sinned in your entire existence, it gives you no reason to walk on this planet with any burdens on you about what you did in the past if you ask God to forgive you for it. You've got to get heavenly minded. This, I want to focus on something we talked about. He told you a lot of things. Yes, he did. But he talked about a specific parable. Yes. The parable of the prodigal son. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yes. When, when he was looking at me, communication there is thought to thought. You, I got to make sure people understand that. So when he talked to you, it was from, from really his thought to your thought, just like he does to most of us on this planet now. So this thought came all of a sudden for him communicating to me about the prodigal son. And this is what he related it to. He said that the prodigal son was really the Jewish people that had left. And the son that had stayed was the church or the Christian church right now. 
And yet he was saying the prodigal son, he's calling back home. He's saying, come home, come home. And they're on their way home. And he's looking like the father was looking. You know, I, I love that parable because it says the father went out every day and looked afar. He didn't, he didn't wait to see a sign. He was looking every day. Now, up to this point, you didn't interpret it that no, way. No, I did not have this interpretation. I interpret it like a lot of people do. This is a Christian that has fallen away from the Lord, and he's coming back to the Lord. But, but Jesus but, told you, no, it's the Jewish it's people. It's the Jewish people. But what he was really emphasizing more than anything else was as they are coming back to him, the church here, the Christian church, was not receiving them like he wanted them to receive them. They were literally getting jealous. You know how the, the son was jealous. Well, I've been with you all this time and you haven't killed no fattest calf. You haven't done this for me and, and, and all this thing. And I love what God said. He said, everything I have is yours. This is your brother. He's, he was once dead and now he's alive. And we don't look at it that way. But the prodigal son is literally Jewish people. And God says, these are your brothers. They were once dead why and now they're alive. show you that? You know, I really believe he's showing me because that's what he's wanted to emphasize during this age right now. This is becoming the end of the age. And so near the end of the age, he's calling the Jewish people back to him. You know, I do a, a, a meeting in New York almost every year in Long Island. And uh, in that meeting, uh, they, they put it out and they say, come meet the author that wrote In Heaven, Experiencing the Throne of God. And so most of the people that come are either Jewish, Greek, or Catholics. They come. And, and I sit there for about an hour to, to four hours, the last time was four hours long, and I answer questions. And at the end of it, we ask, how many of you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I am very surprised how many Jewish people raised their hands to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Not because of what I said, because God is calling. God is calling. From the Jesus, Jesus himself showing right. you this for a reason. When we come back, Dean's going to share with us that there is a culture in heaven. He's going to talk about that culture when we come back. Don't go away. Your gift of support for the work of Jewish Voice today will make you a key part in providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable especially infants and toddlers, and that without our help, some of the most precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. The question is, how many can we help? The answer lies in part with you. As our special thank you, when you share a gift of any amount right now, we will send you the powerful new book by Jonathan Burness, A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife a new look at heaven and hell with stories of people who have been there. In it, Jonathan Burness takes you on an unforgettable journey of exploration, examining the ancient Jewish sages, the scriptures, and the firsthand accounts of those who have glimpsed at what lies beyond the veil of death. It's an eye-opening journey that empowers you to reimagine heaven and get a clearer vision of the glorious eternity that awaits all believers. This version of A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife is a special, limited edition, hardcover edition of the book. Plus, you'll also receive Dean Braxton's fascinating eyewitness account of his journey to heaven. In heaven, experiencing the throne of God. Both books are yours when you share a gift of any amount right now. But we have an additional gift for you. As an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our illuminating and inspiring magazine, Jewish Voice Today. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished Jewish people on earth. Please remember, 
The days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please call, write, or click right now. I'm back with Dean Braxton. It has been so fascinating. We're discussing what happened after he died and went to heaven. And Dean, we left off with, th with this. There is a culture yes. in heaven. You came away or yes. discovered in heaven something you had never seen before, that there is actually a culture in heaven. Yes. Talk about that culture. I really believe the culture that he gave the Jewish people was not a Jewish culture. It was a heavenly culture. It's an eternal culture. And it's more vast and more um, detail and life-giving than, than we can imagine. And so I've come back and asked questions of people that I know they're Jewish people, certain questions. And the reason I ask them those questions, because I'm looking for answers to some of the things that I experienced when I was there with the Father and Jesus in heaven. And it was one of the things that really fascinating um, was about the family. Family is important in Jewish culture. It's part of family is important, you know. And one of the things that got me when I got there is that my family literally came to greet me in. Jesus was standing here. I was on my hands and my knees before him. And on the other side of him was my family. How far back? Um, I don't know. D you know, distance isn't a big issue up there in heaven, to be honest did you, with you. Did you know who, who everyone was? Did you know who everyone people is. People you never had yes, met. Yes, never have met. The reason you know who they are, scripturally I always bring it to when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm not doing any more genealogy. I don't need to. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> is, is literally when he was on that mountain, if you remember, Moses and Elijah showed up and the, uh, the apostles or disciples knew who they were. And Jesus did not have to introduce them to, him, to them, you know. The bottom line is, you know, you just know it. My, my grandmother Mary, which I give credit for bringing me into the kingdom of God, was out front. And then with her were other relatives. And it was something to see these relatives, um, some of them I had been on this planet with, you know, but the rest of them I hadn't been on this planet with, and it was generation after generation after generation of those that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they came to greet you me You said in. something so encouraging to me, though. There's no marriage, but you, you are together as a family you unit. You are together. Family is important to God. I also said this to you. When was family developed? In Genesis, the first chapter. So God had created family to be together forever. And I hear people sometimes say, but you don't know my family. I don't want to be with them forever, you know. <laughs> but the bottom line is everything is right. They're right, you right. You really got, you know what Jesus has really done? He has given us the opportunity to be that family that he always wanted us to be on this planet, you know. I, I say to people, talk to your family members. Tell them about Jesus. They may get upset with you, but give them a chance at least to make that decision. Because I, I could talk to you all night, but I, I, we just have time for one more okay. point. And that is prayer, oh, yeah. the power of prayer, much, much more powerful yes. than we can realize. Talk about prayer, well, what you learned in heaven. One of the things I first learned was this. When I left my body to be absent from the bodies to be in the presence of the Lord, I said earlier, it's faster than you can blink. And yet the prayers that people were praying for me and others were passing me by. If you were praying on that day, May 5th, 2006, and you gave me a head start, your prayers would beat me there. And they're prayers from the heart. I came to understand they have no shelf life, you know. There is no expiration date. Or when I was in New Zealand, they said, use by date, you know. That literally, if they're from the heart, God is literally holding on to them to literally act upon them. You know, in the Bible, in Acts the 10th chapter, we came to understand when the angel talked to Cornelius, he said, your prayers and your good deeds are a memorial before oh, God. And if you pray somebody, if you pray for somebody, they'll, you, you'll pray them in. That's, you pray them into well, heaven. I came to understand this. It is awful hard for a person that you're praying for to go to hell. They have their own decisions. They can choose it. But God Almighty is after them. And he knows every movement they're going to be making. It's so encouraging. We, gotta ha we have to have you back, Dean. My fellow sojourner here on this earth, Dean has written uh, a wonderful book, In Heaven, Experiencing the Throne of God. In this book, he shares in a lot more detail about the joyful sights and sounds of heaven, the crystal seas, the, the, the thunderous sounds, the happy family reunions, and most important, the overwhelming love of Jesus, of Yeshua, that permeates everything right down to a single blade of grass. Amazing, amazing. We'll be right back.
the Spirit moving mightily, miracles, fulfilled prophecy, marveling as Jesus calls his people back to himself in preparation for his return, serving as his hands and feet in far-flung places around the globe. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. This is what outreach is about with Jewish Voice. You can be a part of it. Now is the time. Answer the call. To find out how, call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way that we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, eye surgery, all completely free of charge, but most importantly, the gospel. And it's through your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. As our way of saying thank you today, I'd like to send you my most recent book. It's called A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife. This is a new look at heaven and hell with stories of people who have actually been there. The afterlife has become a hot topic in recent years, partly because spiritual activity is increasing exponentially before the Messiah's return. And that's why you need to learn how to rightly discern spiritual truth. In my new book, I'll give you a solid messianic biblical teaching on heaven and hell. And this book is different from anything else out there because it actually goes into the ancient rabbinic views on heaven and hell. It examines what the Bible says and includes some incredible eyewitness accounts from those that you've actually seen here on the program that have traveled beyond the veil. Along with my book, I want to send you Dean Braxton's excellent book, In Heaven, Experiencing the Throne of God. What I like so much about this book is that Jesus is at the center of everything. I, I can't think of a more encouraging message. So if you need some encouragement, check out this book. By the way, we are on Facebook now. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish Voice and can like us on Facebook. I want to remind you, as I always do on every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. This is Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 